This is the Scary Movie Clubcast. Live from the clubhouse, it's Scary Movie Clubcast. This is Mackenzie, Nadine, Megan, Dahmer, and Amanda. And tonight we watched the movie Rebirth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As promised. As <laughs> promised. It was our redemption episode. No. And we have a lot of thoughts about the movie, so we're going to go ahead and um, <clears throat> Megan's going to give us a short summary of the movie. So, Rebirth, it's about this guy named Kyle, and we see at the beginning of the movie he lives kind of a boring life, you know, he doesn't really do much. He's in charge of social media for a bank, and like, I mean, doesn't really have much going on in his life. Um, and his college friend shows up at his work. His college friend is Zach, and he kind of is like, oh, we're going to have a boys weekend. It's going to be great. And Kyle's like, oh, like, what are we going to do on this weekend? And Zach's like, oh, no. Like, I'm not going to tell you what's going on. We're hmm, just going to... Spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. Correct. We're just going to, you know, have this weekend. It's going to be great. You need it. It's going to be perfect. And so, for some reason, Kyle's like, well, you know what? Might as well. We're going to do it. So he shows up at this hotel where he's somehow missed the, like, brunch portion of the seminar, whatever this thing is. And um, he goes he goes back to his car because he's like, well, you know what? I'm just going to leave. Forget it. This was a terrible idea. I don't even know what I'm doing or what this is because there's rebirth everywhere. So he's like, I'm not, he doesn't really know what rebirth is at that point. And he's just kind of like, you know what? Forget it. And so he goes back to his car and he finds a note. I want to say it's like, hello, Kyle. Let's look deeper. Look deeper. Yeah. And so he opens it up and there's a key card inside. And it's for the hotel that he's uh, it, he's at. So he goes up to the hotel room, who, the, the, the numbers on the key card, and goes in. And he's like so dumb because he goes, he looks around the hotel room and he's, you know, he goes into the bathroom and it's got steam written on it. And so then he steams up the bathroom and it's got 911 written on it. So, of course, his next thought is, I should call 911. <laughs> like you do. Because, you know, that's, you know, if it says 911 on a bathroom mirror written by who knows, I should call 911. And so he calls and he's like, no, thank you. And he <laughs> and hangs up. And that's when he sees that there's a safe uh, by the door. And so he uses 911 to open that safe, which has a rebirth branded pocket knife, which he puts away. And then also the TV remote, which magically turns on, even though he, he doesn't have the remote towards the TV. And then he sees one of their weird infomercials and realizes that he needs to get onto a shuttle. Which, when he looks outside, he sees the shuttles out there. So he goes onto the shuttle, and everyone else seems to know what they're doing. And Kyle doesn't. He meets this lady, whatever, blah, blah, blah. This summary's going on for too long, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> deep diving in the summary. Yeah, we really are doing every scene by This is not the summary. This is the A play this by play. Is, yeah. So, well, you guys want it, right? <laughs> You're welcome. Anyways, long story short, he goes to rebirth. And he's like, I don't know what I got myself into. There are all these weird rooms. People are doing whatever they want. It's definitely some psychological warfare is going on in this rebirth house. And he can't figure out how to leave. All he wants to do is leave. He even holds somebody at knife point at some point being like, let me leave. I want to leave. And uh, after he does that, they were like, oh, way to go, Kyle. You finished phase one. That was so great. I don't, I don't know. But, (laughs) but uh, yeah, so then he leaves and goes back to his house and realizes that uh, Rebirth took all of his money and his home is now covered in not only Rebirth products, but uh, on the wall is his time that that he was in the house. It's got photos of what he was doing while he was in that rebirth house. Not the kind of photos you want your wife and child yeah. to see. No. A little compromising. <laughs> but, yes. And it's got the knife holding some guy at knife point. Those pictures are there too. But the 
the story ends with uh, him joining Rebirth mm. after all this and also uh, embezzling money from the bank that he continues to work at at the end of the movie somehow. So yeah. uh, that is that is Rebirth. Yes. You're welcome. That is Rebirth. And also such an easily traceable crime. Like, yeah. it just kills me. Like, not even the type of crime where it's like, oh, I can see how you didn't get caught. I cannot see how you didn't get caught. <laughs> Amanda is going to give us some fun facts about the movie. This was a challenge because it is like a, an indie movie, so there were not many, so I'm really scraping the bottom of the barrel here. <laughs> the movie um, originally premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival on April 17th, 2016, and then the film was released July 15th of that year on Netflix only. And it was part of Netflix's global strategy to do a series of smaller budget indie films. Among those are the Dullpass of the Dullpass Brothers? Duplass. Duplass Brothers movie Manson Family Vacation about the Manson family. That was yeah. clear. <laughs> what? <laughs> you mean like <laughs> Charles Manson? Who that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So the rebirth, the whole thing is all about, like, no spoilers, which when coupled with the idea that its participants should not be spectators, which is akin to anonymous internet haters, suggesting that Mueller intends the film as a self-conscious commentary on online movie culture. That thread, this is, this is what someone said, that thread, alas, is never sufficiently developed and undermined by the fact that no one would dare spoil the film's surprise because doing so would expose the proceedings disappointing climactic emptiness. I was gonna say, first off, there is no surprise. <laughs> and also, Mueller? But he's not known for not finishing a thread. <laughs> <laughs> that was our biggest complaint with Mr. Jones <laughs> the whole time. I don't know if this is someone who liked it or not, but this was my favorite review of it. It was from a user on Reddit, and they said that the movie is a streamable panic attack. Just because it's like so much chaos and like you're just like why is this happening to this guy like what is going on yes i would have four choices yeah <laughs> but i would agree with that I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, this is very stressful oh and so these are just these are my bottom of the barrel fun facts that are mostly just about the people <laughs> <Got> there quick <laughs> <laughs> yes <Okay. laughs> that are mostly just about the people who are in the movie so fran kranz he's kyle he's the actor that i said that i love he's been in a bunch of like other things usually like smaller roles well the year this movie was released was the same year his daughter was born and he became a father for the first time Aww. that's cute so Aww. he's playing a family man and he finally was a family man cute mm -hmm. He's also a favorite of Joss Whedon's and is in the series Dollhouse, which I really like. It's really underrated. It only has like maybe one or two seasons. I love the Dollhouse. Right? It's it was so, so good. good. Adam Goldberg, he's Zach, the cult leader. He appears in the TV show Roar, which is made by the same people who created the podcast of the same name. And the episode he's in, he plays Peter Stump in the episode called A Beast Within. And this is just a fun fact about Amanda, because when Amanda was in college, she had to do a research paper for one of her writing classes, and it could be on literally anything, and she chose to do it on werewolves. Because Peter talking about yourself in the third person? I was <laughs> just thinking that. I'm sorry. <laughs> because Peter Stump is known as the werewolf of Bedburg. Where's Bedburg? Uh, Where Bedburg? Uh, England? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Does sound English. American yes. werewolf. <laughs> well, he's he's a, a British werewolf in Britain. <laughs> Doesn't flow quite as well. <laughs> no, it's fine. Adam Goldberg also appears in the film Zodiac, Yay. which we've watched. Oh, yeah. And Andrew J. West, who plays Jr., the guy who punches Kyle in the movie, he's also in The Walking Dead. He's Gareth, and he's the leader of the cannibal group, the Triceat Rick and his friends. Hmm. <laughs> Zombies. So Carl! Like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Fun fact about Carl Mueller, he originally wanted to be a film critic. No, he didn't. He That's did. crazy. Oh, the irony. <laughs> this man, which also, I when you were talking about the thing where you were like, oh, it's not like totally fleshed out, but it's like a commentary on like people that hate on movies on the internet. And I was like, <laughs> like we're about to do to that. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be like garbage he's gonna be like why don't you make a movie <laughs> okay we Give will and it'll be better than yours i'd be like bro you have a ridiculous budget to do such garbage um, and this also isn't carl mueller's first film about a cult in 2014 he made a movie called the devil's hand 
Um, it's about you're not uh, gonna convince us to do another one. No, this I'm just That's telling where this is you. Going. No, <laughs> I told you this is bottom of the barrel fun facts. I don't like. I have nothing else. Oh boy. <laughs> um, <laughs> we broke Amanda. Now it's time to indoctrinate her. <laughs> we burst. So the devil's we hand burst. is when a young girl starts. When young girls start to go missing within a religious cult, order followers fear a long-told prophecy, while the younger members suspect abusive elders of killing them off. Also, Carl Mueller makes a bit of a cameo in this movie. I pointed out when we were watching it because I just noticed it, and I added it right before we started to this list. He appears in one of the pictures with our main character, Kyle, uh, at the end of the film. And yeah, that was Kyle Mueller. There he, he is. In a green polo. In a green polo. Yep. There he be. All right, we're going to talk about uh, our favorite parts here. Megan, would you like to start? Sure, I would love to start. Uh, my favorite part was the end. Because it was over. That Megan! what I liked. <laughs> Megan kind of tricked us there. <laughs> I was like, I can but, start. I have one. <laughs> look. She's like, before anyone it else is it. It is what it is. I mean, I do... I did kind of like the infomercials. They were I my did favorite too. Because yeah. they were ridiculous. And it ends with an infomercial, right? So, it's, you know, it was a win-win. I like the infomercials and the movie was over. I love yeah. the infomercials. I, like, I mean, I also kind of liked the infomercials, but I really, I kind of love the part where Chad, his like boss, calls him in, yeah. and then is just like doesn't want to talk to him. He <laughs> was talking on the phone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was a good part. That was a good part. Um. Yeah, I probably I liked the part where he's like in his little garage man cave, like going through all of his old college stuff, and his wife comes in. He's like, "Yeah, I saw Zach today," and she's like, "Who?" <laughs> she's like, he went to that school? And then later in the movie, she's like, oh, Zach, hey. Yeah, I, I know. know. commentary on that. Come meet but... mommy and daddy's best friend in the whole world. This man's like a brother to me. No, yeah, he's not. Cool. He's not. There you have it. Now that you've rewatched it, do you still really like this movie? I mean, it's definitely better than Mr. Jones. Definitely. Yeah. It's no one's arguing. Yeah, better no one's arguing with that. But Mr. Jones put the bar basically on the floor. Yeah. So yeah. most everything's better than Mr. Jones. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do think it's kind of funny. I mean, the I, part where yeah. his friend's in the tub, and he just, he's just like, he just like, he like comes home, and he's like, rebirth, rebirth. I think that's my favorite part, is when yes. he comes home, and it's just rebirth everywhere, and then he comes home, and... Zach is just in his tub, like yeah. in a big old bubble bath, and is like, oh, I like hey, the jacuzzi. <laughs> Great jacuzzi. What I love also that he just stands right <laughs> up. Like, was, that, was everyone just like, oh, like, yeah. okay. <laughs> Here like, he oh, is. That's where the male frontal nudity is. Well, I was like, he doesn't have a lot pack in there. No, he really <laughs> did not. Like, the bubbles the covered bubbles it. Bubbles don't hide much. There's not and a lot there. <laughs> there's not, and it there's didn't not look like a much. cold bath, so. No. Yeah. <laughs> I think my favorite part was once they were initially going in with the weird blindfolds and it turned into a gay club really fast. That was a great I part. loved that part. It was just like, rebirth, rebirth. Like, and all this confetti comes down and everyone starts like grooving a little and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know this. I know what this is. Yes. Uh, okay, let's talk about our least favorite parts. Hmm. Nadine, would you like to go first? Um, let me see. So it's like, because I can think of a part that like probably upset me the most, but I mean, I don't necessarily think it was anything wrong with the movie. I think it was very accurate. Uh, so I'll tell you that part real quick, and I'll see if, as I'm speaking, if I think like actual least favorite part that I'm like, oh, I thought, oh, okay, now I have both now. Okay, so my least favorite part. Is, I don't know what to tell you, Megan. That's how she thinks. While I speak, she just keeps <laughs> talking until until the words come well, out. Well, and I wouldn't have had to if I wasn't first, but that's how. It, um, and so I don't make me lose them. Okay, so the first one where I'm like. I, I think that it's a fine part in the movie, but just for me personally, I was like, oh, people are the worst. Because when he was like, honey, you know how you always take those girls weekends? And I was like, oh, that's so right. Husbands, like, almost never get to go do that. You should totally get to go do this. And then the moment where he's, like, out in the hallway with Naomi, and it's becoming immediately extremely clear that he's there for sex. And it's like, why are you the worst? It's like, this is why. This is why you don't get boys weekends. Uh, so that part just annoyed me in that sense that I was like, oh, okay, I don't like this character. In fact, I think moments later I said, I hope this guy dies at the end. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, my least favorite part, just like as far as a movie, what I would have for sure changed if I was doing it is that the part where he like figures out that they've stolen the money and calls the bank that part just takes too long. Like, what you're trying to tell us, you should be able to tell us within 30 seconds. Like, yeah. and that thing goes yeah. on for like a minute and a half. 
Megan? You know, like, um, the beginning up until the end, which is my favorite part. That's my least favorite. Uh, Dang, calm down. <laughs> I could have thought harder while you were speaking, See, but I was paying attention trick. to that's what you were saying. Trick. But I was also <laughs> saying nonsense for a lot of that time. <laughs> well, that, during that time, I was That's when you, <laughs> you gotta learn to multitask. The problem, Nadine, is that I was laughing and then listening. <laughs> Uh, Do you want a moment to think? Yeah, I think. Okay, I Dahmer. Well, okay. I don't know if this is necessarily my least favorite part. I guess it stems into my least favorite part. So I, I his wife, when he mentioned Zach and she finally figured out who he was talking about, mm. clearly didn't like Zach. Oh, it's yeah. like yeah. I think he's a ter- basically giving the impression of thinking he was a terrible influence. It was like, oh, why why did he want to come talk to you? You know, sort of thing. Moment she sees Zach in their house. Um, I mean, I think the, at first the polite thing would be like, oh, hi. But the moment her husband was, like, making it clear that he wanted him to leave, all of a sudden it's like she loves Zach. And she's yeah. like, what are you talking about? He can stay. And that yeah. fed into my least favorite part of Zach basically threatening his family. Yeah. And I was like, stay, but don't bring your, his daughter in here. Don't give them something to drink. Like, I could feel, I was, I don't know. You know, I, yeah. I have a, an emotional connection with both characters and I could feel the like don't do anything to my family i'll do whatever you want just that fact that he's yeah yeah amanda amanda also used her time well (laughs) i'm sorry i can't listen to what she loved thank you (laughs) i'm like i cannot listen to them otherwise i'll say i could say the same thing and then i'm like well well (laughs) this is embarrassing i actually love the whole movie Uh, yeah she's like guys i love this movie so deep I mean, it wasn't deep. It could, maybe could have been deep. If he was a better writer. If there was a different plot. (laughs) Honestly, I think the plot could have been the same if just the writing was better. Then I think that it could have been deep. Mm. You could tell he was trying to be deep at certain points. Yeah, I almost wish that his wife had, like, are, been rebirth or like already was yeah. already was in on it. The I whole for time. sure thought yeah. that that could have been. A yeah, twist. I thought that was. I forgot. Yeah. I couldn't remember if that was where it was going to go. I was like, mm. I wonder if he had considered doing that as a maybe. Twist. I think the part I don't like is that at the end, rebirth like wins basically. It's clearly, one of those corrupt pyramid scheme sort of things that are like plaguing the world, and <laughs> it just it won and it's getting everything it wants. I thought it was weird how obsessed Zach was with Kyle. Because, like, you can tell throughout, at the beginning of the movie, when he goes to see Kyle, but then it becomes so abundantly clear towards the end, like, once he's entered phase two, and he's like, oh, I did this all for you, this is for you, Kyle, it's for all the Kyles out there, and then he repeats that same type Mm -hmm. of, like, uh, line of thinking at the very end with all the infomercials, is he's like, this is for all the Kyles, I did this for Kyle, and I'm like... That's weird. That's you haven't weird. talked to him since college, and you've been like obsessing you, over him. You guys, and you clearly, built this like, whole thing because you felt that he wasn't living his life the quote unquote right way. And you've done this to so many people I just mean, to right. be able to do it to Kyle. Yeah, it didn't make sense. <laughs> I mean, if yeah. the Manson family taught us anything, is that psychedelic drugs mess with your brain? <laughs> well, yes, I just was like, that's. <laughs> It was just yeah, a lot. but shrooms don't have as lasting effects as. And there's oh. no, and it's not as if Kyle really genuinely is consistently on shrooms. I mean, it's like what in the movie they. Well, look, no, no, no. I'm saying that Zach well, no, became obsessed with Kyle because of the shrooms. Because it was Kyle's, it was Kyle's idea to write that stupid manifesto. Yeah, I, uh, I guess, but I mean, that's like it seems like a 15 year project or something. Like, it's, I mean, clearly, crazy. clearly they wrote that when they're 20. They're clearly like you know 32. He's married and has like an eight year old daughter. Like, it's clearly been a long process for him to make rebirth. I think my least favorite part, besides what we've kind of talked about, is, I don't know, I like, uh, my favorite kind of movie is when things get kind of confusing, but again, it's like the Mr. Jones way, where it's like, it's just too confusing now. Like, I'm starting to get to the point where I'm so confused that I'm lost. Like, I want a little bit more knowledge of what Rebirth is, like, why we're here. Like, it starts out as, like, this no spoilers. Cult. You have to lift the spoiler curtain, Amanda. <laughs> like, I, as a viewer, need a little bit of a spoiler curtain lift. Like, I don't need to see the whole behind the scenes but all of a sudden it goes from him like getting kissed on by all these ladies to now it's like when he went in there to rescue zach it was like 
just genuinely like all hell broke loose. It was like people are screaming, like Naomi's screaming. He all of a sudden has lost his mind. Like he's like throwing stuff, and you're like, how did this escalate like this quickly? I don't know what's happening. I don't know why you're so upset. Like Zach is not even speaking clear English. Like. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, it was just so, like, it was too muddy, like, well, I, having a nervous least, breakdown. which well, is fine, but it was so muddy, like, well, I think at least for me, I feel that way when it feels like the writer or the director doesn't seem to know where they're going. Yes. Like, I don't mind having a spoiler curtain if it, if I feel like I'm being led by someone who's going to be able to, like, make yeah. everything clear, but if I'm left and then at the end I'm like, I feel like if I sat down with you and asked you these questions where we're like, why is he obsessed over Go when he hasn't even seen him, blah, 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 all these, like, weird things that arise, that you wouldn't have answers. Yes. That you would be like, ah, it was good drama? Yeah. No. Yeah, and that's kind of how I feel, like, at least especially that part where he goes in to rescue Zach, it was just all of a sudden, like, where are we? Like, why? And, like, I don't mind the mental breakdown. Like, that's cool that clearly he's, like, has reached his breaking point. But it was, like... It was okay. Too instant. It was so fast, and now people are just like screaming and walking around the rebirth area, and now everyone's in on it. And now we're gonna switch to this scene of these all these Asian people in a Tai Chi room for no reason. It made no sense. Like it's also all, racist. Yeah, like and it's only Asian people in this Tai Chi room, and now we're gonna go back. Oh, Zach's got his. I mean, Kyle's got his hand up against this guy's throat, and Naomi's Jesse. screaming, and it's like. What is, where are we? Like, why, where are we? Like, what is happening? Was everyone happening? else wondering the whole time whether or not Jesse was going to be a boy or a girl? Yeah. Yeah. When they were like, Jesse's coming, sweetie. I was not expecting that man to be Jesse when me he popped either. in the room. I was like, yeah. oh, wait, kind of someone younger. Oh, it made a lot of sense to me <laughs> when I saw him. I was like, yeah, you would run a gay dance club. Yes. <laughs> Jesse. I kind of love Jesse. Me too. Jesse was like, that, he was... It's like I brought cupcakes. It was when, it was when Zach called him a stunt man that I was like, no. Nah, a stunt, he's not he a said, stunt man. He said black he has belt. a black belt. Oh, get out of here. Jesse, black cupcakes, belt to match his black shoes, maybe. It's almost I like them seeing this film before they had cast Jesse. Black, yeah. Um, plot quality. Who wants to start this one? Um, I will okay. start. Um, Bummer. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I concur. Again, well, definitely better than Mr. Jones. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think going off of what you said, Mackenzie, is that it's hard when it got really muddy right yes. there in the middle. What it did is it reminded me of, like, Fight Club, because Fight Club did it so well. Yeah. So where it's well. like, they there were things they didn't want people to know about what was going on with Project the- Project Mayhem. Yes, with the movie- and so they hit it behind a spoiler curtain. But even though as an audience, you don't know exactly what's going on, by the time you got there, you were like, okay, I, now I get it. Like, once you got to the end, you were like, I feel better. Mm -hmm. I understand what happened. I can look back on things and understand them better. But we got to the end and I was like, nope, still yep. don't understand what happened. I don't, yeah. like, it, like, it didn't really make sense still. Yeah. And that's why I didn't like it is because it's like okay you can have it be confusing because you want people to as an audience to experience the same thing that the character's going through but then you have to give us understanding at the yeah. end which is what we they don't just get didn't. Yeah, yeah i think carl mueller needs to take a few more writing classes yes uh, yeah and directing too because also filmed too cheery and that was also the same with mr jones i felt like i think it's like megan said like once he got out, he got on the bus, he went to his house, and everything's rebirthed again. I was like, oh, that's hilarious. It's not done. But I still was like, it's not done? Are we really not done? Like, why? Like, why are we still... This is phase two? It doesn't make sense. What? When did phase one really end then? Also, it's like, I don't care. I don't I didn't care. care about him at any point. I, I don't know. I wanted him to just go back to his life with his family like he wanted. I, I did want him to win at points, but I was just so tired and, like, confused that I'm like, I don't know. It just wasn't a good movie, but I think... Oh, she'd actually stab Jesse. That would have been an interesting twist. That would have been... Not <laughs> killed him, but, like, stabbed him. <laughs> and Jesse's like, oh, yeah, go on without me. Because then I would have loved to have seen their reactions right then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would have been great. They're like, oh, shoot. Like, oh, we shoot. definitely need to use a prop knife next time. <laughs> Well, Jesse was encouraging him. He was like, yeah, stab me. Do it. Do it. Don't listen to them, master. They're trying to put you back in a cage. <laughs> I love Jesse. I'm so hard right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, we can talk about any scares that we had. I would say I the only think. the only part where I felt like even the slightest bit anxious was when the the wife and child were on the way home from the swim thing. I that was the, I'd yeah. agree. Yeah, the only point where I was like, I hope they are coming home. I hope they're okay. But like literally, even when they walked in the door, even with the Kool Aid, I was like, oh. I'm not really worried. Like, I'm, no. like, I didn't, you definitely don't want the wife and daughter to get injured. They're innocent. But you're also a little bit, like, well, they're not going to. I feel like since everyone made it out of Rebirth alive, I was like, well, everyone's going to make it out of this movie alive at this point. Like, yeah, exactly. no one's really going to get killed <laughs> because we've already gotten this far in a torture porn freaking building. Like, no one's going to be hurt. Like, Yeah, honestly, I expected it would be like, oh, your wife and daughter are home, and it's one of those, like, other chicks and, like, some other little girl, and yeah. it's yeah. like, what have you done to my wife and kid? And it's like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> I know, but it, they didn't do that. Well, I feel like we can talk about laughs. It made me laugh when Jesse first came in, too, and had the cake, and yeah. I was so annoyed that he was being so rough with him. I was like, be nice to that poor man and his cake. I know. Made him drop it and ruin it. That's not nice. It was rude. Kyle, it was his rebirthday cake. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Happy, re- <laughs> Happy re-birthday. I thought it was funny that that one dude kept calling him Carl. We were laughing about <laughs> that. was that. so good. Like, like, they like, corrected him and everything. It's like, no, it's Kyle. No, it's Kyle. Okay, Carl. Carl. <laughs> no, Carl, listen to me. And you're like, oh. Like, I think that's what I like about it. I think it's just overall I find it to be pretty funny. It's not the funniest thing I've ever seen, but I think the funniest of it makes it entertaining enough for me to watch. His boss was funny. We all oh laughed at his yeah. boss, Chad. Chad. His, Such a Chad. His Chad. no Such shoes on. Well named. Can I just say that? Yeah, yeah. so well the named. ultimate Chad. <laughs> the moment they said Chad, I went, I bet it's that guy with his shoes off. <laughs> yes. And I think Kyle was just like kind of this awkward, goofy person. Like, especially near the beginning when he was trying to get on the bus and it was like, he like, didn't. Yeah, because the whole thing is he doesn't make decisions or think for himself. He yeah. Just, like, is this okay? Big old game of questions only, this movie. Yes, big old game of questions <laughs> oh, only. That was so annoying. I hated that scene where <sighs> Naya, him and Naomi are just asking questions back and forth to each other. It's like, that's not a conversation! <laughs> Dude, that made me want to pull my hair out. I was like, okay, fast forward, I'm over it. I'm I think done that was the it. idea. Yeah. Well, I hated it. <laughs> well, it was terrible. <laughs> Funniest part for me was, uh, what did you say his name was? J-Rod? Jesse. Oh. No. no. Just, she, said it in her, <laughs> she said it in her, um, <laughs> Zomber's just, oh, like, in her thing. the funniest oh, part. Oh, 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 the guy oh. who punched him? Yeah, the first room that Kyle wandered into after going into the wish room. Which, I, which that was point was. The wish room was so weird. Uh, um, wish room was is that he ended up, I don't even know what they were doing in that room. The wish room? No, the oh, one. It was like it was clear. No, yeah, oh, yeah. I knew what they were doing. It was like but the, the room therapy after. room. Yeah, it did some kind of therapy. It was therapy. like a meditative therapy ish. Yeah, but uh, so Kyle wanders in there and he's like, oh, sorry, you're gone. Like, I didn't mean to. It, it, knew it. Yes. They are. So th- this guy kind of like immediately singles him out and like is like, oh, I hate this guy. This guy interrupted everything. He's the worst. And yeah, Nadine pointed out he's just like staring him down. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, immediately he was, dislikes Kyle. He's supposed to be the leader of that room, which. But there's no not. leaders. Well, yeah. I know, but he was the leader Only of that masters. room. <laughs> he was the master of the room. But uh, Air. The person who's leading it at the time <laughs> that he enters the room uh, feels this terrible presence while she's trying to do whatever it is that she's doing. And JR's like, oh, is it when Kyle enters the room? Because he's being a wet fart. <laughs> so when you're like a yeah, wet it's fart. Like this asshole came in here like a wet fart. Yeah. Yeah. The best. <laughs> Okay, Dahmer. Oh, I like Jesse. Just everything Jesse did. Yeah, I mean, specifically that whole thing about the, like, when he's like, oh, no, I'm so hard. I'm like, you need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> it was so random, too, at the moment he said it. But it totally fit his character. Yeah, <laughs> he fit the whole so movie, funny. really. <laughs> okay, Amanda. 
<laughs> All the rebirth merch. It's just so good. They got merch money for days. I know. T shirts, water bottles. Well, when you're products. draining the accounts of the people who join rebirth, you're going to have the money to. You got merch money. Yeah, you do. I mean, you would think they probably have food production plants if they have all of I mean, of at this point, yeah. Food. I mean, it seems that way. It's also pretty funny when JR punched him. Theodore pretty much warned him. <laughs> yeah. No. That was funny because he's like, minute before. <laughs> nobody in this room's nobody's got punched in the face, <laughs> and then nope. two minutes later, he punches what's his name, Kyle, Kyle. in the face. Carl, You're welcome, <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, Carl. Carl. <laughs> Carl. Also, I wonder if that was like intentional that they're like Carl because the director and writers Carl. Well, I bet he wrote it in. He's yeah. the writer, so <laughs> I'm sure he was like, "This is funny," <laughs> and it was. So, nicely done for once in your life. <laughs> oh, I, I think my favorite funny part, though, is when Zach is tied up, and so Kyle comes in to save him, because he heard him screaming, and then he's, like, getting him down, like, just everything that happens from, like, the point that he cuts him down. <laughs> it's like charging <laughs> one of those was my pee bucket. Yeah, one of those buckets <laughs> is my bathroom. He's, like, and it's literally <laughs> kicks one of them over. And then he's, he's like, like, charging him on all fours, like, ah! <laughs> I know, and then he starts acting crazy. Yeah. Put your pants on. <laughs> well, you're gonna put these pants on. <laughs> oh my gosh, I think my favorite funny moment was the wish room. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was crazy. That was like, because so they go in and it's just weird. Like, there's this just beach. two dudes like meditating. Yeah, these two like hillbilly dudes just meditating, and then it's like a beach sound. And like then blue, light, blue lighting, like but it's not like serene, like it's some junked up warehouse. And then some girl comes in and sits right next to him. And then one of the hillbillies just comes over and starts touching up on her. Mm-hmm. And then she starts touching up on him. Yeah. And then the dude reaches over and, is and like, touches Kyle. up on oh. Kyle. He's like, like, Kyle, I got you, Rob. And, and Kyle's like, like, no, no, no. And then the guy in the back's like, let me get a picture. Oh, <laughs> that was That was a good shot. I will give it to them. And then they turned him and it's just like, ah. <laughs> so, Nadine, what do you rate it? I would give it like a one out of five merch. Megan? I'm going to give it a 1.5 out of 5. Rebirth water bottles on sale now. <laughs> <laughs> Dahmer, what do you rate it? Yeah, same as Nadine. One out of five merch. Amanda? Um, I'm going to give it one Rebirth water bottle and then one Rebirth t-shirt and then half a Rebirth pocket knife. Mm. So two and a half. <laughs> okay. I will give it one Rebirth water bottle and one Rebirth fl- um, sack of flour out of five. <laughs> <laughs> so two out of five Rebirth merch. Because... I don't know. I'm really glad it was better than Mr. Jones. Uh, yeah, yeah. At least there truly, is that. truly. <laughs> and it was it about cults. Was. And it and was funny on purpose. Yeah, and in all fairness, it literally was like miles above Mr. Jones. Yes. Just still garbage. Not a good yeah. movie. <laughs> I always like a good cult movie. Well, I didn't like this one, so. Like if movies like The Shining didn't exist, maybe this would be good. Well, Me, if I had never seen a movie before. <laughs> <laughs> if good movies well. didn't exist. Yeah. yeah. This one might be good. Might be. Maybe. <laughs> Might, maybe. You're like, let's just stick to real life. At least we could pick favorite moments. Yeah. That's we true. That. Yeah. 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 Except Megan's was the ending, so. Look, it is what it is. <laughs> I agree with that one, though. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Scary Movie Clubcast and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Uh, see you next movie night, and don't forget, there are 75 days till Halloween. Bye! Bye! Bye. Bye. Face. Oh Sorry, guys. Megan is in a chair that is like one of those gaming chairs. And she I almost just fell backwards, but I saved her. My favorite part. <laughs> it's a real thinker, isn't it? Uh, we all need a moment to think here. Do we need a laughing break? Did you fall again? No. Just no. watching Amanda interact. <laughs> She's like, I can do this so quietly, you guys. <laughs> But also, I was literally right about to be like, Amanda, aren't you uncomfortable? Because Amanda was like, squat. <laughs> I yeah, love yeah. that I was, I was on the ground. Fair enough, fair enough.